Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. So today I'll be working on my personal 335i single turbo. So I haven't worked on it in a little bit because I've been waiting on parts to come in and right now it's just sitting up in the air. So those parts finally came in and the last thing I had to do was pretty much put the exhaust back on. So before we even start this whole video, I'm gonna go ahead and just run this clip of it. Start it up, cold start with the open dumps. So the exhaust is on now and pretty much it's a straight pipe all the way to a boiler exhaust with the quad tips and I really wanted to go ahead and change the tips but I think I'm gonna go ahead and change that at a later date because I really want to um, pick up a welder and once I get a welder I go ahead and cut them and then re-weld on some new ones. So I was gonna go ahead and replace my old M-Tech diffuser with this one, Duke's Dynamics one, but it doesn't fit at all. It pretty much doesn't line up and the holes don't match and I think it's for E92 so yeah not gonna work so I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean this one up and I might paint it or something like that I don't know yet so here I have a box of all the replacement parts here are some straight valve covers a window regulator MHD Wi-Fi some shock struts for the hood and some shock mounts and some light colors. I'll go ahead and do the regulator for last, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do the easy stuff to make me feel a little better, get the ball rolling, and install these covers. So for some weird reason, when I wanna get my AC evacuated, they never put the cap on. So that's why I tend to not like going to shops and stuff, cause they just, I don't know, they just don't care about people's cars. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a cap for that. I bought two of them, but I didn't realize that I had one. So I might as well just have an extra spare. The next easiest thing is going to be my headlight cover for the back. So what happened is, I don't know where it went, but it came off and I don't like to have it loose because if there's none there, then it go ahead and fogs up my lights. So even you washing your car range or something, all in here is going to get fogged up and then it just, after it gets fogged up and get moisture in there, it just looks horrible. You can't even clean it anymore. That happened to my last lights. So here you can see the missing hole where it needs to be covered right here. So apparently I ordered the wrong one. So this is the one that came in new and this is the one that I took out the passenger side light. And you can see it's a little bit smaller than the other one. And this one is huge. So my lights are Euro LCI headlights and I'm guessing the Euros run small and the US spec ones are huge. So the part Got like the same writings and stuff on them. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go figure this out because I don't like having my light being exposed like that. Especially you never know in Florida when it's gonna rain. So to fix this light, I went ahead and got this template cut out of the cover. So I was gonna go ahead and just wrap it around some tape and try to push it in. I'm like, eh, it's kind of flimsy. So I said, let me just get a piece of ABS plastic that I got. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to fit and get small enough so that I could go ahead and put some rubber around it. So that way it'll be even more secure. So I'm gonna try it out, see how it works. Might work, might not, who knows. All right, so I finished it up and I stuck it in and it pretty much fits. Fits real snug and tight. So this should help it from pretty much messing up. So 
I guess that's out the way. What I'm gonna do is get some more uh, electrical tape around here to seal it up more. And yeah, that should do it. Go ahead and replace my expansion tank cover. So what happened was I opened up the reservoir and noticed that this was stuck down in there. And this came off in two pieces. Cause when I was driving, I was testing and driving around the block and I saw coolant spewing out here. And I'm like, okay, coolant is supposed to, or at least smoke from coolant, and it's supposed to be on this side. Usually you see it on that side or something like that. So I assumed it was something from here. So when I came home, let it cool, open it up, I just saw this sitting in there and this broken. So still full of coolant. So I just gotta replace it and I should be good to go. Some point in time, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this whole thing like aluminum one or something like that, but this is still brand new. This cover was I pretty much picked it up at a junkyard because a friend of mine needed a cap, so I let him use mines because, hey, my car was sitting for a little bit, so I didn't really need it. And there you have it, brand new versus the new one. So, and easy enough, we're done. Next thing I gotta replace is my hood shocks. So I've been meaning to do this for a while because what's messed up is I got this dead in my hood because these failed on me and I had the engine support bracket running across and it landed right on the tip part of the support. Let me see if I could pull it up. So this part right here, it went right through there in my hood. So I have the hood supported, and the only thing I gotta do really is just get a flathead and um, pop it into here, and I believe down here also. And this will just just knock it, and it comes right off. So I'm gonna have to do it for both ends. So I'm gonna try and go ahead and knock that out right now. And it's complete now. And I'm so happy now that I can actually have my hood support open, and I don't need a jack handle to go ahead and pretty much support the whole thing. Now, this thing is pretty sturdy see that come back so these are the last few things i gotta do uh i have the mhd that's pretty easy to stick it in and it works i have the suspension pretty much the strut mounts at the bottom for both sides pretty much the driver's side one needs replacing but i just went ahead and replaced both and the rear passenger window regulator so uh I think I'm gonna do the window regulator. These, actually I don't really feel like tackling these today. I might do them tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in today. So the reason for these lugs is because for a while my car was like a parts car. So cars working on needed some bolts. So I said, since my car's sitting, might as well just take them off. So only got three on here. So I guess I gotta replace them on each side. So that's an easy thing. I'm already gonna have to be taking off that wheel. So I'm just gonna leave these for now. So the door's already off. Uh, got the glass supported. Put a little packing stuff down here so that in case it doesn't fall and break, that would be another issue. So the doors and stuff is over here. And this is the old regulator. So the motor's still good. So I'm just gonna transfer it over. So the issue is right here, it got stuck. So right over here, you can see where it broke. So I don't know why they made this thing out of plastic. This is the main part that fails all the time. This is like my third regulator on this car since I've owned it and I'm the second owner. So from 50,000 miles to up to 170 something right now, all the other regulators are perfectly fine. That's the, they're on the OEM ones, the originals. And this is my third one now. So I don't know, something about the passenger rear window regulator that just always goes bad. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and transfer over the old motor to this one. So it's just these T20, I'm gonna use a T20 to take these three off. So I'll take those off, pull it over, and we should be able to go ahead and start placing it back in. But man, this is like a lot of plastic. This thing is sure as heck gonna break again soon, so. Hopefully somebody go ahead and make a upgrade to this piece right here. It's the piece that generally breaks. All right, so the motor's out. 
and the cog still looks good and it's been moving up and down good so i have no complaints about it so i'm just gonna go ahead and like grease it up some and then cut this wire put them in da -da -da -da. And we should be good to go all right so now we're ready to put this in and yeah i'm gonna take that sticker off and weasel it up right here but first, I'm gonna take these out and I don't want the window to drop. So I'm not gonna record this part. All right, so it's partially in. So this bolt, that bolt, and right here. Those just need to be tightened down. And then once I'm done, the window's not on the cradle yet. So I'm gonna have to like lower it, come from here and just lower it down and let till it snaps into this bracket right here. So when you're taking it out, you just gotta like pry it off and lift the window up. All right, so I have the window here and see how I have it right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and from the top, push it down into the holder. So you're trying to get that green knob thing into that hole. So once you push it in, it'll clip right in. So there we go, good to go. Uh, you can see it's clipped right in. And if I try to lift from the top, it doesn't lift up. So yeah, we're good to go right now. So I'm just gonna uh, take these out. These are for the doors and for the lock. So I'm just gonna let it put the whole assembly back together and we're good. All right, so the door's on, and I definitely need to go ahead and clean this whole thing up. But I'm going to go ahead and see if it works real quick. Initialize. Loading up my favorite scan tool. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can remember where this thing is at. Service. It's the body of the car. And should be on the lock. Yep. And it is not. So, passenger rear, four. And yes. So apparently I got some kind of electrical gremlin going on because right now I am like pushing the buttons to open the window. It's an accessory too and nothing's going on with the windows. So this is the front right here. Go to the rear. Same thing. This do it's the one I just changed. Nothing still. Child lock. All that. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure this out because this is weird. I was about to paint this thing, but let's say you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna clean it up and put it back on. I am kinda like demoralized with this gremlin of electronics on this car. When you have electronical problems with BMW, it's like a nightmare to go try to figure out. So, the shock things, I'm gonna deal with that another day. These, I'm just gonna stick them on. We'll throw that in, but whatever. Everybody's seen that MHD. Wi Fi flash, I'm late to the game on that. <laughs> but the only thing I'm really happy about and it has put a smile on my face is that my car hood is standing by itself without the support of a handle jack. So I'm pretty happy about that. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video and hopefully have this car down in the air in the next video. Actually, yeah, we're gonna have this on air in the next video. I'm gonna try to figure out this uh, electrical gremlin issue 
And yeah, I'll see y'all next one.